Melis, my love, I'm gonna need you to burn everybody. Don't worry about the distraction, just burn everybody. To the front, to the side, to the back. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to House of the Dragon. We're now on season two, episode four, which is called The Red Dragon and the Gold. So in the last episode, we just noticed that both House Green and House Black are not doing so well, complete disarray, and that Damon has gone off to Heron Hall to try to get them onto the side of the queen, but he's seeming to have some kind of weird nightmares, day walking dreams, I'm not sure what you'd call them, but either way, it doesn't bode well for him. And then in Alicent's side of the world, things are falling apart, Aegon and, you know, Aegon's still just being Aegon, he's still a mess. And Aemon got thoroughly bullied by his brother yet again. And we see that they've also sent forces out to Heron Hall by ground as well because they both want to get, both Green and Black want to get control of Heron Hall and the Riverlands because they're pivotal to this war. So yeah, this the, the ball continues to roll as far as this crazy war is concerned. I'm ready to jump into this episode. So without further ado, let's do that. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I upload reactions to this show or anything else you might be watching of mine, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you'll be in the know. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. I just apologize, there might be some background noise today because I have a fan on, it's very hot here. Ah, oh, the memories you had in this hall, huh? They definitely weren't warm and fuzzy. Speak plainly. Since when do you don't understand High Valyrian? Ooh, dark inner thoughts. Tell us how you really feel, Damon. Yeah, she's the raven. Ooh. The dreams you've been having, sir. Sir Criston's army, now tripled in strength, might have Harren Hall at this destination. There's no might about it. Let's see what your Lord Paramount is made of. I mean, they already warned you this man's on the brink of death, but good luck with that. This is Oscar Tully, grandson to Grover Tully. He is heir to River Run and the future Lord Paramount of the Riverlands. He's the heir. Consort to Damon Targaryen. It is an honor, Your Grace. Indeed. <laughs> oh, it's not his fault. He's just a baby. Lord Grover raised me in his stead. All very touching. <laughs> Are you here to speak with your grandsire's voice? For House Tully in the Riverlands. While he still lives? I mean, sounds like it. Didn't House Bracken that declared green, Your Grace. Who could remember? Summon the Blackwoods here. I require men of action to lead my host of Rivermen. Not the puppies. I mean, listen, I respect him for standing up to Damon. Like, excuse me, maybe in your family you'd be killing each other, but in my family we actually like each other? Alan. Yes, Princess. I'm given to understand my lord husband owes you his life. But I was not told his saviour was so comely. Ma'am. Your mother must have been very beautiful. Great niece. Ma'am. That, that's a bit imposing. So the rumours about him being his son might be true then. That's, um, that's a very jealous of the baby mama type of action right there. Just, you did not think to mention it. I did not think it relevant. Really? I know who he is, Corliss. And that is? He saved his lord's life. He should be raised up and honored, not hidden beneath the tides. Is this why you came? To subject me to an inquisition? Where? Where has that woman gone? I suspect to try and draw us all back from the abyss. She said what she said. Okay, so it is his son that he had while they were clearly together. Corliss, you ho. This is why you can't have nice things. Do report if the recipient has need of any remedy that he is known to disagree with the guard. I shall observe the girl closely. Mm-hmm. The girl. You see the way he's like, yeah, this this third person, your friend. Do you believe Viserys wanted Egon to succeed him? God, no! But I can't tell you that. I could not know. Good answer. His grace never raised the matter with me. Mm-hmm. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Run away now. He's like, you think I'm stupid enough to say that in front of you? The way you're protecting your badass children? You must have me mixed up with one of your white maesters. 
Mm. Look at you, Sir Horlot. No one wants to have your big-headed baby. She said I'd rather drink this sh and die than possibly be knocked up by you. Useless. And what is Cole's heading? It is difficult to say, but there were signs of an army moving northwest, I believe. <laughs> she believes. Well, you what do you want her to do? She can't see. Perhaps you can, Sir Alfred. When right? You excite them on your dragon. Period. We could perhaps act if only we had a host of our own or someone here to lead us. Your Mind sarcasm your is not needed. Thank you. Why should your voice be any louder than ours, princess? Because I'm a princess and I have a dragon. Shut up. And command our vassals, but they are gone. What has come of this council? Mm. Well, you're not raising your voice to his wife. Uh, sit your ass down. Is there not to be done in the absence of the queen but to grouse and claw for power? It's so sickening that they don't listen until a, 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 a man comes into the room. We do not know the queen's Rainey's is speaking sense. Who it is now? You can earn back your honor by raising his banner and fighting in his name against the whore of Dragonstone. I am all oh, this man needs to die. Call her call her that again, Sir Horlot. You don't want you sitting there spreading leg for any royal that gives you the time of day. You have the nerve, the audacity, the gumption. Oh, I, I need him to die so painfully. Is there no honor left in this world? <laughs> not on that, not on that side. Kingmaker. Period. You're not fit for the white cloak. Never been, and you know it. You're a whore. Yours will come in kind. Yes, thank you. That truth is coming, you know it's true. Oh, I can't wait. Can it be now? Castle is more crippled than I am, Your Grace. Damn. He's not lying, though. It's like to drive Damon to madness as he attempts to make use of it, which is beyond his faculties. He's not wrong about that. How, how do you know this? You sent word to me. To you? They're all like, what the hell is happening? What council are we on right now? Without my authority. No, you shouldn't be bullying him. I mean, he's not wrong about any of it. Eamon is better suited for this job, even though I still hate him and I want him to die. Brooks Rest is an easy target. A worthy effort. Don't you agree, my king? You might as well, bro. You've been getting drunk for the last 15 years. You don't even know what's going on. I don't like Eamon, but I like the fact that he's hitting his brother where it hurts because, you know, Eamon's been, or Egan's been bullying him for way too long. I thought I'd look in on you, Your Grace. After your absence from the small council, I feared something was amiss. Can you not creep? I ventured into the lamprey pie at last night's supper. Too far, I fear. With the evidence right there on the table. Can I uh, look at your sweaty feet for a minute, my queen? Since you're giving it up for free, now I know that for sure. You have not seen yourself of late. How would you know what I am? The significance of Viserys' intentions tied with him. Exactly. Smartest thing she said all season. Now get out of here, creepy! I need him to die as well. We're really just gonna watch Damon lose his whole ass mind out here, aren't we? That's what you get though, because you'd have to do all that with Rhaenyra. If you just behave yourself, we wouldn't be in this prop this this mess right now. Oh great, now you're hallucinating Aemond. I'd say it's a fire hazard, but then I remember where we are. Never mind. It's a touch late to be stalking about a strange castle putting its people to the sword. This girl again. I'm called Alice. Oh, finally a name. Strong. Rivers. Ah, bastard. bastard. How are you settling in? Right? Let's talk about it. Long before he came. It said their whispers can still be heard sometimes. A midwife's town. Is it? Have you experienced anything? Right? No. Maybe we shouldn't be dismissing this so quickly. So you've come here after quarreling with your wife. What? T? Perhaps to prove yourself that. Do not try me with your incidents, witch. It's oh, it's a witch now. With a castle and a dragon, attempting to draw an army of men. This girl's speaking straight truths. Here, drink this. 
Um, no, you had your fingers in it and you licked them. Wow, this man who wouldn't eat peas on night one is drinking a concoction that woman gave him? You really are snapping, Damon. What might I do for you? It was you who summoned me. Your grace. Damn, Damon, you are losing it. Oh, great. Now he's seeing his last, well, his second wife. Damon, my guy, get on your dragon and go home, bro. Now lords in the crown lands, browsing. The herds of this is your king, people. This is your king. Okay. Just give him a squeaky toy and let it be done. And with Aemond and Vagar also at the ready, we are a formidable opponent. You bore me. But this is the stuff you said you wanted to be privy to. Okay. And this new Kingsguard dude, like, did he literally just get the job yesterday? I ordered them removed. With no thought to the centuries of knowledge in those pages. I don't think, Mom, that's not my thing. And you know that. Oh my god! Oh my god. Losers! Do you think simply wearing the crown imbues you with wisdom? Right? And strive to learn from the more studied minds around you in the hope that you might be half the king your father was. Oh, there it comes again! Damn! You have no idea the sacrifices that were made to put you on that throne. There it is again. What would you have me do, Mother? I don't know, grow up. Do simply what is needed for you. Nothing. Oh, God! Oh, God! Sir, why are you even... Wow. Both your mama and your grandpa just said you ain't sh to your face. Like, I would just never... You'd never see me again. I would disappear. You would never see me again. Dragonstone and their dragons are just across the bay. What? Grown tired of living, have you? I hope so. Please, God. We need to send a dragon. Where? Oh, welcome back. To support the war that your vassals have been fighting in your absence. Ooh. Your grace. Snarky. Where have you been these last This days? is not the place to have this conversation, Jace. I inherited 80 years of peace from my father. Before I was to end it, I needed to know that there was no other path. Exactly. Because Lord Staunton is a member of this council. And because his castle is small and vulnerable and there for the taking. Smart. I will go. No. Send me. No. I will burn Cole's lines and withdraw before King's Landing could even you raise the, the experience. alarm. So do you, technically. You must send me, Your Grace. Mm. Melis is your largest dragon and no stranger to battle. Yeah, she's the only one with actual experience. FYI, I accidentally saw a spoiler about this on the uh, on the internet, so I know what happens. I didn't mean to, but yeah. I wish only to fight for you, for your claim and mine. I. She knows, but give her a second. I should have told you when you first became heir to the throne. The Song of Dragons or Ice and Fire? Sorry. Since Egon the Conqueror's time. Not this boy mounting up too. Unfortunately, I don't think that we'll be lucky enough to lose him. Ordained to lead the seven kingdoms to strengthen them. Oh, I like Rhaenys. I'm already upset. What Viserys told me when he named me his heir. What Jaehaerys had told him. This man literally riding drunk. At least they got some badass archers. I'm worried about those cannons though. And where are you, Cole? You're such a badass. Why aren't you in the front of the charge? Melise, my love, I'm gonna need you to burn everybody. Don't worry about the distractions. Just burn everybody. To the front, to the side, to the back. I hope y'all realize that he used you for dragon fodder. Whose dragon is this? Uh, wasn't he supposed to be protecting the palace? I hate this kid so much. I hate him so much. Now, how's Eamon about to wreck all this? Can he die too? That's all I ask. And y'all actually stood there. Whose dragon is that? Your king. You happy now, you jackass? Yeah, 
himself to lay ambush and mm. in the attempt. No. Bitch ass bitch. With divine purpose for the one true king, Edgon. If you're smart, sir, you're gonna stay exactly where you are. Cause Cole ain't going into that advancement. Yeah, staying right there by the tree line. And the thing is, Amen don't give a fuck about his brother. You see why you should have Jakar stalled him in that damn hall? Oh, he's down a dragon anyway. There's your king. Are you aren't you proud of him? Ugh. Land, you dummy. Actually, no, don't. Drop from this height, I wish. Like, there's another dragon. They're coming from everywhere. It's raining dragons. Get inside. We must get you to cover my yeah, right now. Look at him so proud of himself. Oh! This show is gonna make me crazy with letting this man have so many Ws. I need him to, I need him gone. Yeah, he don't give a damn about you. He'll kill you both. He don't give a damn about you. You really thought bullying that boy was gonna do well for you in life? Your, grace. Your plan went splendidly, Kristen. Retreating would be the best option here, unfortunately. You know you can't win against Vagar. I cost Ailis. Oh. I'm about to be very sad. Badass women don't deserve to go down with little ass boys with one eye. Do you understand me? This is bull. She deserves better than this. Look at it. You can see it in her face. She's giving up. She knows this is it. Oh, look how much smaller Malaris is. Oh my God. This is horrible. Underhanded move though. Keep scratching. Come on, Maylise. You're going to go out, go out in a blaze of glory. Do you have a weapon for Aemond? Like, I'd be, if I had something like a projectile, I'd be like shooting that little one I so much. This looks amazing, though. Sad as it is, this is the best, most badass fight we've seen. Because we didn't really have a dragon fight in the OG. I want as much of these bitches dead before. I can't have my girl go out for nothing. I want number of these assholes killed. All of them, dead. Should get Cole. Yeah, step on these bitches. Oh no, Vagar is a salty bitch. She's definitely coming after you. You know she's coming after you. Yep. I'm sorry, sis, I could have told you this. Vagar is one, she's a salty hoe. She's such a salty hoe. You were a girl, you were an OG, Melise. Oh, she just let it happen. I mean, there was no saving yourself at that point, but. R.I.P. You were such a such a G, Rainies. Eamon is a bitch, and he couldn't do shit without that dragon, and he fucking knows it. I hate him so much. I hate Team Green. I don't even want to watch the rest of the season. How is there more? I don't care. Because this whore is still alive. Bask in your victory, Cole. And annoyingly, I know Eamon's still alive. I just, I can, or Egan, I can feel it. He's dead. Ash. That's you. That's you. This is why Renero has said when you have a fight with dragons, all of this death. Amen. Why are you calling him that first name? That's a prince. did a great job. You're a fantastic hand. What was your job again? To protect the... Right. Now Eamon's gonna be on the throne. Even better. What a holy mess. Damn. 
Mm -mm -mm. Both houses down bad, guys. Both houses are down horrible. And it's sad because it didn't need to be this way. Really didn't. This is what happens when you have a salty little whore running your army with a twitchy little brother who's got his bullying complex to take out on everybody as his bestie and a drunk on the throne. This is what we've got, guys. This is Team Green. Y'all are winners. God, I don't know how people can raise banners with this people. these people realizing that this is what you got. This is what you're dealing with. Woo. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about in this episode. Honestly, where do we even go? Damon, not much to say about him. I guess we'll talk about him real quick. Losing his mind in Heron Hall. Whatever Laris is saying is absolutely true. That place is cursed. It makes people crazy. I don't know how the people who live there are still sane, or maybe they're not, but either way, uh, whatever that lady Alice, if she's actually real, is saying is absolutely the truth. Damon has not been right since his first night there. Probably doesn't help that he was already not in the right, you know, the best of mindsets when he showed up. But yeah, all of his demons are coming back. Like first Rhaenyra is a child, you know, Rhaenyra basically saying a lot of his inner truths, the fact that he is jealous of her, the fact that he doesn't feel that she deserves the throne, the fact that he's kind of mad that he's got to, or he's supposed to be bending knee to her. Like he's doing it, but not because he really wants to, it's begrudgingly. And it's all coming up to the surface, as they say now with him uh, in this place and letting his, his subconscious run wild. But I thought that was very interesting too, that his second wife, I can't remember her name right now, also popped up, right? That she was pouring wine there. Like of all people, I feel like Damon probably did her the least dirty as far as being a wife, but he must feel some guilt in, of some sort towards her. Or maybe it's because of the way he's been treating his daughters. I'm not sure. But either way, he is not doing a good job of holding Heron Hall. Like right now, if Cole had marched on Heron Hall, he would have taken it because Damon is not in his right mind, let alone thinking, you know, strategically right now. But yeah, we can see that the Riverlands are in a bad way anyways. Um, he probably could have organized things better with that guy that was there. But as we saw, he's just not even in, 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 he's not even here. He's not even present at the moment. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take before people realize he's lost it. Hopefully someone will send a raven to Rhaenyra and tell him to get his ass out of there. But I don't know, felt, felt like we were getting some foretelling there when that lady said you were going to die here. I do think that's probably going to be his last place because I do know eventually they're going to make their way to Heron Hall. So anyway, that's pretty much Damon back at Team Black. We see that, you know, Rhaenyra going off to King's Landing without telling anyone her councils. They were already shaky, but they're getting shakier. They feel like Rhaenyra is really not taking this whole thing seriously and that they're the ones who have to do all the, the hard thinking. But it's, you know, Rhaenys is doing her best to keep it in check. Bela too. Good Bela though can we just give her some props the way she did look I'm telling you what I can tell you I'm, I'm up on dragon back I can't get too close I'm telling you what I can do but like Cole's not an idiot he knows that the best way to fool a dragon is to move under under a tree cover in the dark when they can't see well so what do you want from me like I can't get any closer without engaging and they're like oh well what are we supposed to do blah 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 and it's just like I get it. Like the one guy wasn't completely wrong when he said that right now their their ship is utter is rudderless. They don't, they're not really going in a, in a defined direction. <clears throat> they're right about the fact that Rainier was very wishy-washy about the war. But again, we know that's because she did not want it, right? She smartly did not want to plunge the whole realm into war. But now we see that thankfully Corliss, I think I said in the episode, it ticks me off so much that no one really took the girls seriously. It wasn't until Corliss came in that they finally shut up and listened. And it just annoys me, the misogyny. I know it's real, but it just bothers me because Rhaenys is very smart. She's always been very smart and pragmatic and she was she was speaking truth. They just didn't want to hear it because it was coming from her. But anyway, we see that Rhaenyra finally did come back. And like she said, now that I know that my father did not, you know, he did not change his mind in the end. I know it with absolution that this whole thing's a mistake and that, you know, if Allison's unwilling to work with me, then I got to do what I got to do. Now she's actually like, I'm in this war. I don't want to be, but I'm, this is where I'm at. So at least now the council feels a bit better knowing that she is for war. Jace has been like practically frothing at the mouth to get into war. That's the way it goes with people who don't know what war is all about. But anyway, so that's where I went off. And of course he wanted to go off and meet the army that Kristen is raising towards Rook's, Rook's Rest. But understandably, you know, smarter than the one who flew out on his dragon, she realizes that Jace being the, the heir, like literally the last heir that's with her, because all the young kids are now over in Pentos. But even so, you don't want a young kid like that to be the successor. Like she knows she may not, Renera knows she may not live through this war. So 
she's like, I can't send you out there, Jace. Like you are just as, pre- you are just as like precious as I am as far as the lineage and who might go on the throne after me. So you have to stay here. Also, I think she is being a bit overprotective because she just lost, lost Luke. And that makes sense as well. But I like that she decided to tell him the story of the, the Song of Ice and Fire because that's a very important thing around the royal lineage that none of Allison's children even know about. So, oh, that makes sense. I kept wondering why Allison was so obsessed with finding the books. She wants to find out about the Song of Ice and Fire so she can tell her kids. She's trying to, mm, I get it now. I get it. She ain't gonna find it there though because it wasn't written. But anyway, so yeah, that's where it is with House Green, or sorry, House Black. Um, we see that my G, my G, my niece, she said, you know what? Someone's got to go face this battle. We can't just let, let our allies be, in, be left hanging. We have to send someone out. So I'll go because I have the most battle experience on a dragon. And uh, the thing is, even if I hadn't been spoiled, I kind of would have already known that it was probably her swan song. You know, just the way that we've seen a lot of her the last episode, this episode, her facing off with Alan. Um, there was speculation I saw in my comments were saying that Alan is... Uh, the son, I'm assuming illegitimate son of um, Corliss. And it looks like there's truth to that. And that is why there is some animosity there between Alan and Corliss. That makes sense, especially if he's been trying to hide him all this time. But anyways, I think that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, my girl, my girl Rainice decided to go out there. And yeah, the way she took down Eamon with a, with a quickness is crazy. Like she showed why she was a force to be reckoned with on that thing. And it just sucks that, of course, she didn't know about Aemon being there. We all know Vagar is not the, she, it's the biggest dragon. They said Vagar is the biggest and oldest dragon, most battle experience. And I mean, yeah, she's a big girl and she's not to be messed with. She's not to be played with. And unfortunately, yeah, I think that even Rhaenys knew that going up against her was going to be her last battle. But she didn't want to run away. She wanted to do her best to, if anything, at least injure her, if that's what she could do. And she did manage to injure her, but on a dragon that big, it's not going to be enough, unfortunately. So yeah, super sad we lost her. I loved her character so much. Just pragmatic and smart and beautiful and kind and just a cool character. She was a very cool character. And I would have loved to see more of her, but you know, she went out fighting. You know, she did go out as a badass. I guess I just wish she could have hurt Eamon somehow on her way out, but it is what it is. You know, that little jerk lives to see another day. Speaking of that little jerk, I guess we can move on to Team Green. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time there because I'm trying not to be too ranty and evil because I don't have any love for them. But I think the only points I wanted to bring out was with uh, Eamon, or sorry, Aegon. Aegon realizing more and more that nobody takes him seriously as a king. Like, I don't think it really occurred to him, like really occurred to him how much people don't respect him. He's taken the fact that people fear him because of his position as respect. And he's realizing more and more and more that no one does, not his own family, not his council, no one. And it's really starting to get to him because between Otto saying that your dad never wanted you to be king to his mom now saying you're nowhere near the king your father was, like he's starting to recognize that no one is in his corner. Let's get it straight. I cannot stand him. I do not like him. I did not forget all the stuff he did last season. So that's why he's dead to me. However, as a character, you understand how he's gotten here and you can almost somewhat feel for him in the sense of, you know, he was raised to be this useless sod. You know what I mean? Not the things that he did last season were of his own volition, but the uselessness, the absolute lack of any type of understanding of what to do or what this, this position of being a king entails is because of his parents. Neither of them did anything to raise him to be an heir. And now you've put him on the throne and he's very ill-equipped. And now he's like, y'all are expecting things of me you've never taught me to do. So... You know, on the one hand, like I said, he can go, but I do understand why he's somewhat pathetic in a sense, because he was never raised to be able to do any of this. And Allison proving once again that she is the worst mother to ever mother, ever, because not only has she never given any of these children any type of love, affection, or ever shown them that she actually wanted to be their mother, but here, when her son is going through a lot, like let's not forget that he just lost his son a couple of days prior, all of these things. And she's just like, yeah, you're useless. Your job is to shut up and be a dummy and let everybody else do the work. You can't even do that. Like you are the worst, Allison, in so many ways, in so many ways. 
And so anyways, um, that's kind of Egan. Not surprised he got on his dragon to be stupid, but you know what? I think he kind of was at that point where he felt he felt the uselessness. Like I can't imagine what it feels like to realize everyone in your family doesn't respect you, right? Like no one cares about you at, at all. And again, you know that he looks to his mom out of anyone or out of everyone in that place. His mom was kind of the place that he thought he could find some safety or security because she's kind of coddled him, but he found out the hard way over these past couple of weeks, but she's never really respected him or loved him that much that it was all just to get him to a certain place. So yeah, it's kind of, it's messed up. I actually, I really thought of, um, what was Joffrey's little brother, the middle, or no, the baby? I can't remember the prince, right? There was Joffrey, the daughter, and then the youngest one in Game of Thrones. He reminded me of the youngest one in this episode in the sense of being completely lost and realizing that there's no one in his corner, you know, that he's just been a puppet this whole time. I honestly thought he might pull one of those things and just jump out a window, honestly. But anyway, Alicent, I mean, what more is there to say? There's not much to say. Yeah, of course she got herself knocked up. What did she expect? She seems to forget she's still a child childbearing age, jumping up and down on Sir Horlotch. What did she think was gonna happen? Anyways, her moon tea, which I'm pretty sure that maester knew it was for her. I mean, she does have a good cover because God forbid we already know that because of Egan's disgustingness that there's enough of those girls she's got to make that for. But I think he kind of knew. He was like, mm, sure, when that other person needs it, let me know if they need any extra help. But anyway, I'm not surprised, but I just think it's another haha, screw you to Cole that uh, no one wants to have your baby. <laughs> Someone on the timeline I saw showed a picture of um, Rhaenyra and Alicent both taking the moon tea because neither of them want to have that big headed. Anyway, they're like, we would rather take this and almost die than have your kid, Cole. Know that. How much does that suck to be you, sir? But yeah, outside of that, we see that uh, she meets with Laris, and Laris is noting that, noting that something is off with her. And my guess is that he probably had people who saw her go to the sept. Maybe they don't know that Rhaenyra was there, but he knows something went, hap something went down there one way or another. And he's trying to figure out where her head is at. And she thankfully didn't give him much. She just said, look, you know, I'm not happy about this war. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm not, this is the reason I'm in a mood is because everything sucks. And he's like, I feel like there's more to it. And then he starts asking her about whether or not he believes that Viserys meant it when he changed his mind at the last minute. And she basically said, you know, it doesn't matter what he meant at this point because he's gone. And my point is, I think that Laris has already picked up on the fact. And again, I feel like he definitely has been listening to some of the arguments that have been happening with Otto and other people. But long story short, I think he's figured out that there was something that went wrong and that Aegon was not supposed to be on the throne, that it's supposed to be Rhaenyra. But he's gonna hold on to that for now because he's where he is where he is and he feels like he's in a good position. But you know, as like any true and good informant, he wants to know all the tea. He needs to know exactly where to position himself in order to be successful no matter what the outcome of the war is. So. Yeah, anyways, I thought that was kind of interesting with him. I just was praying he didn't ask her for any freaky stuff, and I'm glad, I'm so glad that he didn't uh, do that. But again, he also has the tea because he definitely knows that that moon tea was for, for Allison. So he's got he's got a lot of information, is my point. Laris has got a lot of tea on a lot of people. And we'll see how he decides, to ch how he chooses to disseminate that information going forward. Yeah, not much, much else except for, you know, the battles with Sir Horlot. I don't really care because he annoys me. As I said, I'm annoyed that he's getting these W's because he's really thinking that he is something, that he's something great. He's not. You're a loser, sir, who just knows that, you know, you're just a loser who finds yourself under the skirt of whoever's got power. You've got nothing. You've got nothing. And now you let the king die because you're a dumbass. Because if you'd been actually managing things properly, you would have realized that Eamon needs managing. You can't just leave him like that. Or Egan, sorry. You can't just leave him like that. And truthfully, if Rhaenyra was really on her, if she was really on her Zoom, she would have sent a dragon to King's Landing right now. She could have raised all of King's Landing right now while you have your little boy out here, your little master plan. But you thought you were so smart. I'm just so mad that he didn't get, all he got was knocked out. He deserves so much more. But anyways, Rick's rest is gone. So it's true. Now Rhaenyra is really in a bad place because she's down a dragon and a rider that were probably her best in her team. Let's be real. And she's got no more land and no more land uh, allies from my understanding outside of River Run. And... Yeah, it's just not looking good. I think she has more dragons than Dragonstone because it was only Aemond, right? Yeah, because I think Helena has a dragon, but she doesn't ride very often. She definitely wouldn't be good in battle. That's it, really. Yeah, that's it. Those are all the dragon riders. Aemond is literally the only dragon rider they have right now other than Helena in King's Landing. Like, yes, he got the biggest, baddest dragon, but I believe a couple episodes ago, they mentioned that if all the dragons took on Vagar, there's no way. Like, Aemon would die or the dragon, one or the other. So, and I think Aemon knows that now. Um, 
But either way, he's arrogant, so maybe he would be stupid enough to think he could take them all on. But yeah, House Green has taken a loss, definitely. If Aegon, I don't know, I'm assuming Aegon is dead. It's possible he survived, but he's definitely broken. There's no way of taking a fall like that, that he's not gonna be this far from death. So, uh, and his son is also gone. So there's no heirs left in his line. Literally, that means Aemon should be next. God help us, we cannot have that man on the throne. We can't have that. So yeah, it's a mess. Either way, it's a mess. Like I said, Team Black took a real big hit today, but I feel like Team Green also took some L's. Cole knows that this is definitely gonna shake everyone's faith in him and his ability to do his job. And I'm glad about that, at least. He'll be embarrassed yet again. Also, Allison is gonna be livid with him, which, you know, I don't really care about the relationship, but I just like the idea of him being yelled at by someone that he thought actually likes him. So yeah, it's, it's a messy business, this whole war thing. It's definitely a messy business. And it's getting, we're just like, this was just the, this wasn't even the worst that it can get. Like this is just the beginning. Just the beginning, two dragons down, two people down, all those people on the battlefield, like, and we haven't even gotten to this war properly. It's gonna be, ugh, something's gotta happen. Something's gotta give and it's gotta give soon. And I think Aemon is a big part of it. If they take out Aemon, they've lost all of their battle riders and their biggest dragon. So he's kinda, he's gotta be the target going forward. He's got to be the target. And I feel like it's gonna be him versus Damon, but that doesn't make me feel very happy right now because Damon is not in his right mind. So mm. the plot thickens guys, the plot thickens, but another good episode, even if it got me upset. Once again, RIP Rainice, you were queen. Love that actress, hope to see her in more stuff. But yeah, good episode, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.